Are you an aspiring trader? Are you keen to become a market analyst on the stock exchanges? Do you want to learn more about market risk, compliance and regulations on derivative positions? Or are you appearing for broker certification examinations like those administered by the stock exchange regulators? If your answer is yes to any of them, then this video is the right content for you, especially if you want to learn more about futures contracts. This video specifically focuses on mark to market and I am your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. The video is ideal for stock exchange broker examination candidates. It's a learning resource for chartered accountants, CMAs, CFAs, FRMs who are keen to join the global banking industry in compliance and regulations. It's a knowledge video for professionals keen to join global investment banks. All about futures contracts provided with detailed explanations. Hello everybody. I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan. Keep learning, keep growing. Let's take a look at futures contracts. Futures contracts are listed derivatives traded on stock exchanges like New York Stock Exchange and the National Stock Exchange. Even on BSC, we have listed derivatives. For more understanding on listed derivatives versus OTC derivatives, I'm sharing the link of the basics of futures contracts in the first comment below. Since these contracts are traded on the stock exchanges, the Terms and conditions of the contracts are very standardized. These are standardized with respect to price picks, with respect to settlement dates, as well as with respect to lot sizes. We'll be explaining each of this in this video. The price lock-in is provided by entering into the futures contract. So therefore, in futures, we can initiate either a long position or a short position okay and that is a very useful activity from a trader's point of view especially if you're looking at hedging or speculation so price lock-in is very important that is provided by the futures contracts and is available for both long traders as well as short traders and because futures contracts are so heavily leveraged look you trade on a particular day and you have almost 25 days time within which you can settle the contract, it's a highly leveraged product and therefore futures contracts have very stringent, very strict, very automated margin requirements. Let's take a look at each of these concepts in this video. So are we clear? These are listed derivatives. Because they are listed, they are standardized. The Traders can take a long position or a short position in the contract. There is a price lock-in and there is a significant amount of leverage and therefore traders have to maintain strictly margins with the stock exchange. The margins are of following types. The first one is called as an initial margin. As the name suggests, initial margin is the margin that is provided to the broker so that the trader can initiate a position. As soon as you place a contract on your stock exchange, the broker will collect the margin because the stock exchange collects the margin from the broker. Okay, So the initial margin is normally uh, collected at the time of entering into the trade on trade date T. Next is the mark to market margin, which is what this video is all about. Okay, let's understand mark to market, a concept that's very important from the risk perspective, from the accounting perspective, perspective from the compliance perspective, short formed into MTM. Then we have the top up margin. Because you have done a mark to market, you got to top up the margin in case there is an insufficient margin. What do we mean by top-up margin? The top-up margin is the additional margin that is to be put by the trader in case the margin account becomes insufficient to hold on to the trading position. And finally, when the position is closed out, what happens to the margin? The margin is deposited into the exchange. The exchange calculates the end of trade margin and returns back to the trader whatever is left back. All right. 
This is all the theory behind it. Let's dive straight away into an example. On 3rd August 2023, let's say Hari Hedge Fund sold August 2023 KH Inc. futures at $150. So as I told you just now, traders can initiate either long positions or short positions in the futures con in the futures market and that's what derivative trading is all about because it gives a very level playing field to both traders arbitragers as well as hedges so hari hedge fund which is a very aggressive hedge fund decided to sell one of its portfolio companies not in the spot market but in the futures market so perhaps it's looking at hedging the position like almost all traders who take short positions you believe the prices are going to go down right so that you can buy back at a lower price when it's more favorable for you so hurry hedge fund has sold or shorted august 2023 kh inc futures at 150 dollars as you know this is a stock exchange traded product therefore august futures means it is the near month futures please go through the detailed two videos that i've already uploaded on futures contracts one is about listed derivatives. The second one is understanding the maturity cycle. That's the near month and the far month futures. So August 2023 is a near month futures. Okay. The underlying asset is KH Inc. stock. And the contract of the, the contracted price of the futures is $150. All right. So these are the terms that you got to understand at the very beginning. The contract size is standardized and mentioned by the stock exchange. That means for KH Inc. futures contract, every contract will have 1000 underlying stock. If it's another company, it will have a different lot size. This in the futures market is called as the multiplier. This multiplier is important to understand because your profits and even losses get magnified by this multiplier the contract value therefore is you have the contract size you multiply by the contract value you get one hundred and fifty thousand dollars all right but when you're initiating the trade when hurry hedge fund is initiating the trade there is only a 30% margin to be paid as compared to the spot market where you got to pay a 100%, right? So spot trades are not leveraged trades, but futures trades are highly leveraged trades. And therefore, the initial margin that is provided by Harry Hedge, by Harry Hedge Fund on this contract is 30% of the contract value. That is 30% of $1,50,000. That's about $45,000. All right. This initial margin is collected on the very first day. For purposes of further explanation on this video, I have taken up an Excel sheet and I have made it into a tabular format. Let's take a look at this again. Initial margin is 30% of contract value. The initial margin is $45,000. This is deposited with the broker. The stock exchange collects net uh, margins from the broker. The minimum margin requirement is 35,000. So over here, there are two terms, initial margin and minimum margin. Initial margin is what is to be deposited at the time of entering into the contract. Minimum margin means that if the margin balance goes below $35,000, then you will get a call to top up the margin. Is that clear? This is, it is not that the minimum margin has to be 35,000 at all times. It is that the if the margin goes below 35,000, then you will have to provide additional margin and you will get that margin call from the broker. So let's make all this into a simpler arithmetic format. Okay, so on day one, the opening margin, we have made a table over here, day opening margin DSP is the daily settlement price, the PNL that's the profit and loss, and then finally the closing margin. So on day one, the opening margin collected is $45,000. 
you have bought the con you have sold the contract at $150 the daily settlement price which is announced by the stock exchange is calculated and you have to value all outstanding futures contracts at $145 this daily settlement price reflects a profit of $5000 why because you have sold at 150 the price has come down you are in profit by $5 $5 multiplied by the contract uh, size is 1000 so 5 multiplied by 1000 is 5000 the closing margin increases to 50000 that's 45000 plus 50 plus 5000 gives us 50000 Remember this, to elaborate on this, trade day is the day of entering into the contract. Second point, initial margin is the opening margin. The DSP, that is the daily settlement price, is the price at which all banks, traders must mark to market their outstanding positions. This is given by the stock exchange. The PNL is a notional price. It is calculated by daily settlement price minus the contracted price. That's over here, 145 minus 150. So since it's a short position, the, it's a profit for the trader. The closing margin is in the positive. Okay? So if you've got this points clear in your head, I mean, you're almost there. All right? Because you've got to understand the DSP is not something that Every, every broker can't value the contract or not do an MTM at their own, uh, you know, whims and fancies. It has to be done at the price that is announced by the stock exchange. Okay, <clears throat> keeping these parameters in place, let's do a build-up, okay? And when you're doing a build-up, you'll understand what happens to the margin account because the margin account is like a flow account, right? Money has to come in, money has to go out, there's MTM that's happening, there's... there's uh, a notional profit and losses being calculated almost every day and therefore let's understand this flow concept very well on day two the opening margin is the same as the closing margin of the previous day which is fifty thousand dollars on day two the prices unfortunately did not work in favor of hurry hedge fund who was a short trader right since hurry hedge fund is a short trader and they place short bets on kh inc if the price increases, it's a loss for the fund. Let's say the price goes up to 155. All right. This means the previous day the contract was valued at 145. The next day the contract is valued at 155. There is a loss of $10 per unit, and this results into a PL loss of $10,000. Is this PL real? No. Is it actual? No. It's a notional PL calculation. Actual profits and losses are only squared, are only calculated at the time of squaring off or settlement of the position. But at the time of daily mark to market, we calculate also the notional PL. We have to reduce this notional loss from the margin account. So we opened at 50,000. We have incurred a notional loss of 10,000. The margin account is $40,000. Okay. So this PL is notional PL. It's mark to market PL. And even though I keep saying it's notional, notional does not mean not real. It just means that it is an accounting procedure of valuation. Okay. Let's go back to our uh, triangular, our, our uh, prism explanations. The opening margin is the closing balance of the previous day. That's how on day two, you got $50,000 as the opening margin. 155 is announced by the stock exchange. The PL short positions incur losses because the prices have gone up. All right, so when the prices increase, short positions incur losses. The closing margin has fallen down by the notional loss. Is the margin sufficient? The answer is yes. Why is the answer yes? Because the minimum margin was only 35,000. So let's build this up some more. 
And let's go to day 3 where we have the opening margin of day 3 as the closing margin of day 2 which is $40,000. The DSP announced by the stock exchange has now $162. Most long position traders will be very very happy if the prices are increasing but Hari Hedge Fund unfortunately has taken a short position in this and therefore the losses incurred further exaggerated by seven dollars right so seven dollars that's 162 minus 155 gives us seven dollars multiplied by 1000 that means the loss of hurry hedge fund is now seven thousand dollars on this trading position topped up on ten thousand dollars the previous day <clears throat> therefore this will reduce the margin account further by how much? By 7,000. That's 40,000 minus 7,000. $33,000 is the margin account now. Short positions incur losses when the prices increase. Is the margin sufficient at 33,000? The answer is a big no. This is because... I'm sorry. This is because the margin is inadequate, right? The minimum margin was 35,000. The margin has gone below. The answer to that is it is insufficient. What happens next day? Let's build it up even further. On the same day, right? On the same day, something will happen. Now let's go back to this. On day 3, when the margin account has collapsed by, by $7,000 further, the minimum margin requirement is $35,000. The trader can either square off and settle the position and incur that loss, right? He has sold at $150. The price has increased to $162. Take out that $12 loss. Incur that loss. Everything is fine, right? Or... If he is a very aggressive trader, doesn't want to square off, they provide the top-up margin for the position. Let's understand the top-up margin over here. On day 3, the opening balance is 33,000. The top-up margin has to be provided. So, how do we calculate the top-up margin? The daily settlement price of that day multiplied by 30%, add that to the margin account, you get an outstanding margin account of $48,600. You might be asking, how is this happening? Please answer your question. Please answer that question in the comment section below. Why is margin needed? Because the positions are very leveraged. You can deal with market risk. It's a compliance and regulation feature and there is less settlement failures because of this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share it with your friends who are also keen to join the global investment banking industry. Thank you very much for listening in.